George W. Swinger was born on March 30th, 1950. Grew up in Myerstown, Pennsylvania. Graduated from Eastern Lebanon County High School. After graduating, he went to California for a life experience. When he went to California, it was the time of the draft for the Vietnam War. He had to come home because the draft warden was after him. He then went into the U.S. Navy in November 1969. Well, I thought if I would ever be in the service, it would be naturally in the Navy because I said, said about my brothers, uh, they were active Navy men. Uh, I think at the time in the 60s, you know, when I was growing up, it was pretty much a given, you know, we had Vietnam going on and on and on. And uh, if you didn't go to college or you were definitely or had some sort of physical problem, you were going into service and you were going to end up in Vietnam. So it, it wasn't up to me, you know, it was just part of the deal. Once he joined the Navy, he had gone through boot camp. Along with staying in shape and going through boot camp, he went to school in Memphis. The school he went to was an avionics school, where he learned the fundamentals and electronic apparatus and basics of computers. In this time period, which was the late 60s, early 70s, there was something called a Fortran computer, in which Swanger learned how to operate. Later, when in Vietnam, the Fortran computer was one of the items he worked on in the airplanes. His first trip to the West Pax was in 1971. He was 21 years old at the time. They traveled on an aircraft carrier known as the USS Constellation. I really didn't know what I was getting into uh, at all. Uh, we had, uh, there's something called carrier qualifications, and that happens off the coast of California where you everybody practices and gets ready and the pilots get ready there's interaction with everybody and make sure the ship works and and everything goes smoothly and uh, on the way over um, I mean you're just lounging around and waiting and uh, just to get there it's uh, drills and practices uh, but no launching or recovering airplanes like I said I really I really didn't know what to expect you know I, I, I didn't understand Swanger explained life on the USS Constellation as crammed. The ship was big. There were 4,800 to 5,000 people on it. The sleeping arrangements were very close together. There was one guy sleeping a couple inches off the floor and another in the middle and one on top. There was about five feet from top to the bottom. George Swanger also shared with us that the food was really good. You could get something to eat 23 hours of the day. You could get breakfast anytime. There were two galleys. The front one served breakfast in the morning, and the one in the back of the ship served it at night. He recalls, for breakfast, they had ham and eggs and chipped beef on toast. He says the crew always knew when it was Saturday, because on Saturday evenings, there was steak and lobster for dinner. During his work hours, Swanger had to wear different equipment. First of all, they had to wear a helmet. Their helmet had either their name or initials on them, so that they could be easily identified. Also, each work group wore a different colored shirt. George had to wear a green shirt because he did maintenance work. The plane captains wore brown, the refuelers wore purple, the bomb loaders and firemen wore red, the tie-down people wore blue, the plane directors wore yellow, and the first aid people wore white with a red cross. The shirts were made of cotton, they were long sleeves with turtlenecks. Before the launch and recovery cycle, the air balls would come over the loudspeaker and tell everyone to put on their equipment. On the ship, Swanger worked as an avionics and electronics troubleshooter. His job took place between launches. He had to plug the airplanes into auxiliary power, get the computers up and running, and make sure that the systems that he was responsible for worked. After recovery, he would interview the pilots and find out if all the systems worked. If they worked, he could give his superior an okay. Swanger worked on the control unit in the cockpit. He also worked on an import device called an ADI. The tools he needed to do this work were a socket set and a speed handle. Swanger was part of the VA-146 group, which was a light attack unit of Carrier Group 9. In this group, there were about 30 avionics people and 20 electricians. There were about 240 total people in his squadron. Among them, there were 14 airplanes. Overall, there were about 5,520 people on the ship. 
Some of the men down below never saw daylight unless they made an effort to. Down below, there were stores. There was a barbershop, two galleys, and two small grocery stores, and two small shopping stores. When the ship was overseas, there were around 70 planes, airplanes on the ship. There were about five or eight planes that weren't the best flyers and that were left on the Philippines. There, there were 65 that were actually ready and capable to fly. There were about six or seven different types of planes on the ship. There was a helicopter squadron. Swanger worked on A7E planes. There were about 28 of those. Every day during combat, they would launch 12 times and recover 12 times. 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening was regular operating hours. The one day when a plane was coming in, they had to rig the barrier, which is like a safety net. They had practices in case it would happen. They had to catch the airplane. On the way over, the Russians would fly big bombers that took pictures of us, Swinger said. That was one of the times when all the cooks and engineers and people from down below decks would come up and watch. Other than this, they never encountered enemy ships so close. The carrier was as safe as it gets, Swinger noted. It was so big and so well defended, not only by our own airplanes, but we had destroyers and many different warships all around us. On Easter of 1972, Swinger and friend went to Tokyo on, on leave, and it was the Easter offensive. It was a really big deal. The North Vietnamese made a big, a big attack. They had to go back. The constellation was back, was back to the Tonga Gulf. Without them to get back to the ship and back to their jobs, they put them on a destroyer escort. It was a whole number 1050. The Albert David. During the trip, they had some shore bombardment and they were at general quarters one time for 24 hours and they were shooting five inch guns at the shore. The enemy were shooting back at them and when we finally broke general quarters, they were able to go out and walk around the deck. There were holes in the flag and there were pieces of metal lying around on the ship from their exploding shells and rockets. The men were at sea for about 20, 25 to, 20 to 30 days at a time. Constellation won a president, presidential unit citation for the good job they had did. So I recalls that there were a few days when he really didn't feel like being there. He knew it was a job and, and he kept himself going by reminding himself that they were all in the same boat. And he just made the best of it. His first trip was difficult. There was a fire and men were killed below decks. There were also planes that left and never came back. Swinger says he... I didn't understand. When he went over the second time, he was older and realized that, that everyone wouldn't come back. He made sure the pilots were safe and became better friends with them. Swinger said that he loved his job and he couldn't have got a, had a better one. He was in the fresh air half the day and he saw the Navy operating around him. He loved his job and he made friends with the pilots and are still today friends with him. Swinger, Swinger's highest rank that he believed was an E-5. He also received different awards. When Swinger was on the shore escort, he got, a shot, he got shot a lot. He received, received a Navy Combat Action Ribbon. He also received Vietnam Campaign Ribbons and Service Medals. He has, some, he has some different memories of his time when he served. He also remembers sometimes when pilots would come back from missions soaked in sweat. George remembers times when pilots would pull alongside each other and get out and hug each other with relief. Swinger also noted that if there were something that he would want people to know about him during the war, it would be that he served. If there weren't a few men like George W. Swinger, we wouldn't have not won the battles we did. Even though they were not walking in the active battle zone, they were still a great contribution. Without their helping fixing planes and refueling planes, we would not have been able to have an air, air attacks. There's men like you who helped our country through all the conflicts we've gone through. Thank you.